Tonight, breaking news, the FBI on this new discovery has another balloon been discovered. Also, the life-threatening blizzard slamming the U.S. and the collision on a major bridge, the truck dangling, rescuers praying with the woman driver. First tonight, that news just coming in, the FBI now investigating debris that's been found. The question, could this be another balloon? Where it's been found and Pierre Thomas standing by. The monster blizzard slamming the west from California to Nevada to Colorado. Up to 12 feet of snow possible in some places. Life-threatening conditions. Winds at the higher elevations well over 100 miles per hour. And where this is all headed. The same system set to bring tough conditions to Texas as those massive fires burn tonight. One fire burning more than a million acres now. The horrific images coming in. Tonight, one day after the deadly chaos surrounding the desperately needed aid arriving in Gaza. Tonight, President Biden saying American aid drops will begin in Gaza. Back here in the U.S., that collision on that bridge and then the daring rescue over the Ohio River. A tractor trailer dangling 70 feet in the air. Firefighters trying to reach the woman driver who was praying. They say they began to pray with her. The future of two trials tonight involving Donald Trump. The classified documents case at Mar-a-Lago. The special counsel tonight saying there is no rule that says the trial cannot be conducted in the weeks before the election. And in Georgia tonight, will the D.A. stay on the case? Russians turning out to honor leading Putin critic Alexei Navalny, an act of bravery in that country. James Longman reporting. Back home tonight, police need your help. Looking at these images, the urgent search tonight, they say what appears to be a man possibly abducting a woman and where they're searching. We have news on the Duchess of York tonight after being diagnosed with skin cancer, what doctors are now saying. Also, the sentence tonight for the man who shot into that car with several young women inside. They had pulled into his driveway by mistake what the judge has decided. And the flight to Newark diverted to Maine because of passengers on board. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Friday night. And we do begin with breaking news. This new discovery off the coast of Alaska. Fishermen finding debris and reporting it to the FBI tonight. The question this evening, could this be another spy balloon in U.S. territory? And given what the U.S. has seen, the FBI is taking this very seriously. Our Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas, leading us off tonight. Tonight, the FBI investigating reports of another possible spy balloon flying in U.S. airspace. The FBI becoming involved after fishermen discovered a concerning object off the coast of Alaska. According to sources, the fishermen suspect it might be some kind of surveillance balloon. But tonight, the FBI is describing the unknown object as debris. Sources telling ABC News the FBI and other agencies will assess the object when it makes its way to shore this weekend determining what, if anything, should be done next, including whether it will be flown to a government facility for further analysis. Just last week over Colorado, NORAD sending up fighter jets to intercept a high-altitude balloon, flying at 43,000 to 45,000 feet. It was determined not to be a threat to national security, but President Biden and the White House tracking the balloon's course. The administration keenly aware of such incidents coming just a year after a Chinese spy balloon was spotted flying clear across the country. President Biden ordering it shot down off the coast of South Carolina. It's payload alone, the size of three buses. David, you're seeing such a rapid response in part because of that massive Chinese spy balloon recovered last year, which we are told had expansive surveillance capabilities. These matters are now treated seriously until an assessment can be made one way or another, period. David, not taking any chances. Pierre Thomas leading us off. Pierre, thank you. We are also tracking a monster blizzard uh, slamming the U.S. at this hour from California to Nevada to Colorado. They are warning of life-threatening conditions in some areas. Snow in some places up to five inches an hour, up to 12 feet of snow possible. Winds topping 100 miles an hour, torrential rains at lower elevations. And this all moves into Colorado and Texas, where it could fuel those fires. Tonight, whiteout conditions. This is Soda Springs, California. People warned to stay inside, told to keep several days of food on hand. Even ski slopes have shut down. Yosemite National Park closed to visitors tonight. ABC's Faith Abube from California now. Tonight, rare blizzard warnings for the Sierra Nevada mountains as the biggest storm of the winter slams California with up to 12 feet of snow, life-threatening conditions, and impossible travel in the mountains. Some of our highest peaks have seen winds in excess of 140 miles per hour, so this storm is just a monster. Officials in Truckee warning. We get a lot of snow. 
Uh, but we don't get blizzard conditions. We don't get conditions where if somebody were to walk out of their house down to the street, be completely disoriented and not know how to get back to their house. The worst of the conditions expected tonight through Saturday. Nightmarish travel already along Interstate 80 in Soda Springs. The Highway Patrol posting this video showing vehicles stuck in the whiteout over Donner Summit. The avalanche danger increasing with snowfall rates of up to five inches an hour. The high winds relentless. This is what officials are worried about. You can see the tree down on this house. Fortunately, though, no one was injured in this incident. Multiple ski resorts forced to close. The National Park Service even shutting down Yosemite to visitors. And David, conditions here are deteriorating so fast that highway officials are stopping every single vehicle except for four wheel drives to make sure they have chains and traction devices installed on their tires. They're also warning families up and down the mountain areas to anticipate being stuck for several days. And this storm system is expected to track over Colorado and Texas, where it could make those wildfires even worse. David. Just stunning pictures there, Faith. Tonight could be the biggest storm of the season for the West. Faith, thank you. And as Faith mentioned, authorities are watching the system because it's expected to also fuel critical fire conditions again in Texas. Firefighters racing to contain the largest wildfire in state history. Before those conditions arrive, the Smokehouse Creek Fire now burning more than a million acres, up to 15% contained tonight, but those strong winds and higher temperatures Faith spoke of are on the way. A recipe for much more. Much of Canadian Texas already tonight, a charred landscape. Look at the pictures. And this evening we have learned a second person has now died in these fires. Tonight we turn overseas into Gaza. President Biden announcing the U.S. will begin airdropping food and supplies in Gaza. It comes one day after that horrific scene, a deadly stampede and Israeli gunfire just as aid trucks were arriving. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge from the region tonight. Just 24 hours after the Israeli military opened fire amid a deadly crush of people desperate for food aid in Gaza, President Biden tonight announcing the U.S. will begin airdropping supplies into the Gaza Strip. People are so desperate that uh, uh, innocent people got caught in a terrible war, unable to feed their families, and you saw the response when they tried to get aided. With half a million Gazans on the brink of famine, the U.N. saying at least 10 children have starved to death. Jordan and other countries already airdropping aid. The president acknowledging not enough is getting in. Innocent lives are on the line and children's lives are on the line. Tonight, condemnation and calls for an investigation into what was supposed to be a humanitarian mission in northern Gaza, when more than 100 Palestinians were killed and hundreds more injured, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. This is the moment gunfire erupted. Israel saying its troops fired warning shots and only opened fire on people when they got too close to one of their tanks, adding dozens of people were crushed to death in the chaos. But survivors and witnesses disputing that. Abdullah Juha recounting the horror, <laughs> saying they attacked us, they shot at us. We don't have any food. And David, a US official telling ABC News the humanitarian aid drops could start as soon as tomorrow, depending on weather conditions. President Biden saying the administration is also looking into ways to deliver aid by sea. David. Tom Sufi Burridge in Tel Aviv. Tom, thank you. Back here in the US tonight, there is news this evening involving the future of two trials involving Donald Trump. In the classified documents case at Mar-a-Lago, the special counsel Jack Smith arguing tonight that there is no rule that says the trial cannot be conducted in the weeks before the election. And in Georgia tonight, will the DA stay on the case? ABC's Aaron Katursky reporting. To the cheers of his supporters, Donald Trump arrived at a Florida court hoping to convince a judge to push the federal trial over his alleged mishandling of classified documents past the November election. For the first time in nearly two months, Trump coming face to face with special counsel Jack Smith, the two adversaries appearing to lock eyes several times. Trump's attorney argued holding a trial before the election is a mistake and should not happen. He asked Judge Aileen Cannon, who Trump appointed, to push the case until late November so the former president isn't stuck in a courtroom when he could be campaigning. Prosecutors responding this case can be tried this summer, accusing Trump of trying to wring out of the court needless hearings meant to delay. And they argued holding the trial before the vote would not violate the Justice Department's policy against bringing politically charged cases within 60 days of an election. They say that policy only applies to bringing an indictment. But in this case, a lengthy investigation is long complete and the charges laid out. 
So a trial can go forward. Prosecutors telling the judge we are in full compliance with the Justice Department manual. Judge Cannon did not issue a ruling today. In a Georgia courtroom, Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis, who was prosecuting the former president for election interference, sitting silently. Trump's lawyer arguing she should be disqualified because of her romance with one of her prosecutors, Nathan Wade. Now, do you have to find that Wade and Willis lied? No. What you need to be able to find is that there is a concern, a legitimate concern based on the evidence in this case about their truthfulness. The district attorney's office arguing Willis's relationship with Wade did not infringe on Trump or his 18 co-defendants' rights to a fair trial. Not a single shred of evidence was produced <coughs> through any of the exhibits or the witness testimony showing how <coughs> their constitutional rights, their due process rights, were all were at all affected. The judge in Atlanta said he would rule within the next two weeks. And here in Florida, David, the judge gave no indication when she would set a new trial date for Donald Trump. And again, the prosecutor is saying there's no reason to wait until after the election because their investigation is complete and holding a trial would not violate Justice Department policy. David? Aaron, thank you. We're going to turn now to the collision on a major bridge and then the heart-stopping rescue, a truck driver dangling off the Clark Memorial Bridge in Louisville, Kentucky. Take a look at this. The truck hanging some 70 feet above the Ohio River right there. How they got to that driver. She was praying and they prayed with her. Here's Ariel Reshef. Tonight, those heart-pounding moments over the Ohio River. We're bringing you some breaking news right now. This is a picture of a truck hanging over the side of the Clark Memorial Bridge. It was just after noon when the Cisco 18-wheel tractor trailer and two other vehicles crashed on Louisville's Clark Memorial Bridge, sending the truck and the female driver inside dangling over the edge some 70 feet above the water. Louisville Fire's highly trained rescue team racing to the scene. Firefighter Bryce Carden lowered down to the cab of the truck, recalling the moment the driver first saw him through the truck's open window. Thank God. That's what she kept saying. Thank God. And I, I told her, I said, just take a deep breath. Firefighter Carden hooking her into his harness. The two of them slowly hoisted back up onto the bridge. She was praying a lot, so, uh, and I prayed with her. A delicate operation that took some 40 minutes to complete. All the credit goes to these folks right here. This was some really professional, well-practiced, well-trained stuff. David, officials are now inspecting the damage to that bridge, which will remain closed through tonight. Authorities say that that driver, who is a military veteran, is okay. David? We're glad she's okay and those incredible first responders. Thank you. Now to Russia tonight and to the emotional scene in Moscow. Thousands of Russians turning out, even amid a heavy police presence there, to pay their respects to Putin critic Alexei Navalny. Here's James Longman. Tonight, they turned out by the thousands. <laughs> Russians braving Putin's security state to mourn opposition icon Alexei Navalny. You <laughs> weren't afraid. We are not afraid either, they chanted, as Navalny's coffin arrived at this suburban Moscow church. <laughs> Others in the crowd shouting, Putin is a killer, blaming the Russian leader for Navalny's death in an Arctic prison two weeks ago. The line around the block well over a mile long. And inside the church, Navalny's open casket allowing mourners to say goodbye to the man whose ideals they hope they can keep alive. His parents looking on at their son, his body covered in roses. Later at the cemetery, his mother giving him a final kiss goodbye. The 47-year-old was buried to Frank Sinatra's song, My Way. And music from his favorite movie, Terminator 2, a last joke said to be typical of his humor. It was largely a peaceful day. At least 90 arrests reported so far at commemorations across the country. But Putin's eyes are everywhere in Russia, and recriminations may yet come. And tonight, in an emotional tribute, his wife Yulia posting, thank you for 26 years of absolute happiness. I will try to make you proud. They only closed the cemetery a few hours ago, David, but huge crowds remained outside chanting Navalny's name. They call him Russia's hero. David. Extraordinary images and an act of bravery there today in Russia. James, thank you. Back here at home tonight, the urgent search for the two people Phoenix authorities have seen in this video. They're alarmed by this surveillance. Take a look, a possible abduction near Phoenix. Surveillance from a gas station showing a woman leaving an SUV starting to run away. The driver then shown dragging her back and driving away. Here's Kena Whitworth tonight. Tonight, a desperate search for two people in this chilling video showing a possible abduction. A man grabbing a woman and forcing her into a car in Buckeye, Arizona. 
Police need the public's help. Help provide us with information so we can identify them and help and see if that woman is okay. You can see a car pull up to the gas pump. A woman gets out and starts running toward the store. The driver then drags her back and pushes her inside. The man then jumps into the car and speeds off. It is scary, you know, not knowing necessarily what their situation is. The surveillance video released nearly a week after it happened last Friday night at a Circle K gas station just off I-10 west of Phoenix. We don't know if these individuals were local. We don't know if they were just passing through Arizona on I-10. Police can't make out the license plate, but think it's a gray 2021-23 Nissan Rogue. Somebody who interacted with this vehicle maybe noticed something unique about it. Characteristics that we can't see in that Circle K video, but maybe can help us kind of narrow down. And David, police say they don't know if this was a domestic argument, but add their primary goal is to find this woman and make sure she's okay. They're hoping that people in the area with security cameras can help out. David. All right, Kena Whitworth reporting tonight. Kena, thank you. When we come back here, you'll remember the case, the man who shot into that car with several young women, killing one of them. They had pulled into his driveway by mistake. The sentence now in tonight, what the judge has decided. And the flight to Newark diverted to Maine because of the passengers in a moment. Tonight, an upstate New York man who fatally shot a young woman riding in a car that turned into his driveway by mistake has now been sentenced to 25 years to life in prison for her murder. Kevin Monahan shot into the car last spring. 20-year-old Kaylin Gillis was killed. Police say Gillis and her friends were looking for a friend's house. A United flight from London to Newark was diverted today to Bangor, Maine. The airline saying a passenger was removed for unruly and disruptive behavior with another passenger and arrested. Federal and local officials conducting an investigation. The plane has landed safely in Newark tonight. When we come back here, CVS and Walgreens and their announcement today involving carrying Mifepristone, the abortion pill, and news coming in tonight on Fergie's health. To the index of other news in Walgreens and CVS tonight saying they will soon begin dispensing the abortion pill, Mifepristone, in states where it's legal. The abortion pill is the most common form of abortion in the U.S. The move comes as rules from the FDA for dispensing Mifepristone are being challenged before the Supreme Court. Some welcome news tonight for the Duchess of York. Doctors telling Sarah Ferguson her skin cancer has not spread and that her prognosis is good. According to the Daily Mail tonight, Fergie was diagnosed, as you know, with melanoma after a routine check in January. Doctors tonight still advising regular screenings for her going forward. When we come back, the incredible gift a grandmother just gave her grown granddaughter. This is extraordinary. Finally tonight here, a grandmother's gift to her granddaughter, America Strong. Tonight in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, the incredible gift, the treasure a grandmother has just given to her granddaughter. I love you, Grandma. For years now, that Thank grandmother, you. Joan Johnson, has been secretly saving the voice messages her granddaughter, Paley, had been leaving her. By the way, Grandma. Paley overwhelmed and overjoyed when her grandmother shared the voicemails she had saved all these years. 18 old messages. This is Paley in preschool. Grandma, I mean, my, and I just got a new scooter, and it's pretty. I love it. So, if you get this message, call me back. Okay? I want. This is Paley at six. Grandma, I thought maybe you could come over and watch G4 for me. You can come over if you want, okay? At seven. I'm not sure if you are um, home. If you get this message, tell my mom. There are 14 years of messages. This is Paley when she was 13. Hi, Grandma. It's me, Paley. I just wanted to say goodnight. I love you and I miss you. Paley sharing her milestones with her grandmother, her first job. Well, you know, I got the job. I got the job on the spot. Yeah, I just had an interview at Subway and I just got the job. So I'm just really happy. And right here tonight. Hi, David. Paley and her grandmother, Joan. It's the little things in life that we can stitch together to make our life so cherished. The memories we overlook the most are, tend to be the memories that we appreciate later on in life. Tonight here, Grandma Joan is already preparing for a message she hopes to get from Paley and soon. That I end up getting my degree in school. Um, I think that would be the best message to leave her. I can't wait for it. <laughs> Grandma Joan, that's a gift. Don't you wish we all had those voicemails? I'll see you Monday. Good night. 
Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.